Welcome to Foundry Exploit Recreation Full Walkthrough. In this video, I'm going to show you how to read the attack, recreate the exploit, and understand the attack from start to finish. This is the scenario for today. You are a Web3 security researcher. An exploit just happened and you are tasked to understand and recreate this exploit. Everybody affected is waiting for you to succeed and give them a postmortem. If you are daring enough, please try recreating this exploit first before looking at the solution. But anyways, this is supposed to be extremely beginner friendly, so no worries if you don't know where to start. This is the exploit given to you. If you can see here, it is from BSC scan, so it is from the Binance network. This exploit is rather short. Over here, we can see that it's like there's only three lines and there are not many locks. And we can see one $443 over here. This is all we know for the exploit. Okay, let's get started. The first things first we want to do is we want to open up Falcon Explorer. Falcon Explorer. If you open up Falcon Explorer, you will see something like this. You're going to paste this transaction hash in. And this thing will come out. So Falcon Explorer can show you a lot of things. Firstly, you can show you the block number that is done, the transaction fee, the fund flow, and the balance changes, and the invocation flow. We are going to focus on the invocation flow. Let's back up a bit. You are given this exploit, and there really isn't much to get started with. So the first thing you do is to open up Falcon Explorer. In this invocation flow, it will show you the exact transactions that happen up until the exploit. And how do, how do you read this invocation flow? Firstly, you can see this word sender and then this address here. So if you can see this, this means that this is the attacker address. If you click on this icon over here that looks like BSC scan, you can see that this is an address and this is the attacker's address. Next. The attacker will call the attack contract. So this is the attack contract. 0x20A49AB4 4B9 and this attack contract calls something. We don't know what it is, but the function name is probably like attack. So if you click this attack contract, you will see that there really isn't much you can get out of it. The only thing you can know is if it starts with 0x6080, it's most likely a solidity contract. But what happens at the start in this attack is the attacker, which is this, calls this contract which he created himself. But we don't really know what happens here. The next line is there's this thing called Fapen. Let's look at Fapen. Fapen is a contract. And apparently, it is a token contract. So, Fapen is actually called Father PP Inu. And this is the contract. If you read the contract, if you click on read contract, this Father PP Inu token or Fapen token has 9 decimals. Okay, so all's good so far. And this static call, which means like kind of like a view function. This static call shows that the balance of Fapen, so the balance of this contract, it had 9 million Fapen tokens. Why? How do I know it's 9 million? Because as we've seen previously, that this Fapen token has 9 decimals. So if you can see here, 3, 6, 9, these 9 numbers are bolded out, which means they are the decimals. So the Fapen contract has 9.5 million Fapen tokens. What happened is that somehow the unstake function is called. Okay, let's look at the code of the Fapen contract. And if I'm not wrong, there should be an unstake function. So this function is called. And then this amount is inputted in. Next, 
there is this approve function, spender equals a pancake router, and amount equals to long param. No, not really sure what this means, but let's move on first. And somehow, after everything that happens, the balance of account 0x20, which is the attack contract, becomes 9.5 million. 9.5 million over here, and 9.5 million over here. 0x20 over here, and 0x20 over here. That means that somehow, in just this four or three steps, the attack contract has got 9.5 million payment tokens. And lastly, pancakerouter.swap exact tokens for ETH supporting fee on transfer tokens is called. And this is the input parameters. In this attack, something happened over here, and then the attacker got away with 2 BNB. So what actually happened here? We have now read the attack. Let's try to recreate the exploit first. To recreate the exploit, all you need to do is to open up your command on your PowerShell and you want to create a folder first. What I do is I like to create my folders in the desktop. So our CD, which is chain directory, one drive. I don't need to type in full. All I need to do is to just press tab and then one drive will come out. And then I'll CD again, desktop. And once again, I just press tab and it comes out. Over here, what I want to do is I want to make a directory. So I call it mkdir and I type fapen underscore youtube and the directory is created now I want to move into this directory so I fapen youtube I type I press tab and now I am in fapen youtube I open the code by typing code and then a full stop and something like this will come out let's minimize this first first thing I want to do is I want to type forge in it and then I type force because it is an empty directory and we'll wait for it and then it says install forge std to install forge you must firstly install foundry so if you haven't installed foundry please go and install it first and then come back to this video if you have installed if you have typed forge in it already over here you have seen all this come out there's this counter and there's this test. So usually if you have gone through a foundry tutorial and you type forge test, the test file will succeed. But we don't want all these things, so we want to delete this source folder and we delete this test folder. Instead, we want to create this fapen.t.so. Okay, so firstly, I kind of made a mistake. So I want to get back my folders, my file, okay. First thing you want to do is you want to actually have the SPDX license, uh, whatever, and then you want to have the Pragma Solidity. What you want to do is just give yourself like maybe oops, 10, yeah, and then you want to import Forge std slash test so the mistake i said earlier was actually you should you can copy these few lines over before you delete your counter anyways let's move on and then we type contract paper is test capital t and we open it like this so this is the skeleton of the contract now what we want to do is we want to populate the contract with everything we need. I'm going to minimize this first and I'll come back to here. Firstly, what we need is the Fabian token. So, what we can do is we can copy this contract. We don't want to copy it here. Instead, we want to copy it over here. As you can see, over here, if you copy this Fabian token, everything is kind of in small, small letter case. But over here, some are in uppercase so you have to copy this address you go back to your file over here you type irc20 paper equals to irc20 and you put address in now we need to know what irc20 is so we need to import the interface how do we find the interface we look at father bb inu and 
Nice. Coincidentally, we have an interface here. Let's just copy this whole thing and let's paste it here. Okay, now we want one more. IRC20. I'm alternate tabbing, by the way. Uh, what we want is we want this WBMB because in the future we're going to swap Fabian for Red BNB. So I want to get this address. And then I come back here and I type WBMB equals to IRC20 and this one. Copy and paste. Make sure you copy from here once again and not from here. Okay, next. What we need is actually we need um, we need pancake router. So we look at the pancake router, we have this contract address. Let's copy this contract address. Let's type I pancake router. Router equals to I pancake router and paste it in. Now we need to know what the interface of pancake router is. Actually in the interface, all you need to, to have is the specific function. So I just need swap exact tokens for ADH. I'm going to find here in the pancake router. I type whoops, I type swap exact tokens for ADH. Wait, did I type wrongly? Swap exact tokens for ETH supporting your transfer tokens. I found this. Let me just copy this and then create an interface called iPancake Router and then type this. Okay. I think that's all. Later we'll see whether we need more. But next is we're going to set up. So we type function setup. Make sure this setup is typed like this and not like this or not like this. So set and then capital U and then P. And you want to have a visibility which is external. The first thing you want to do is to create select form. So you kind of want to um, duplicate the blockchain. The create select fault takes in two parameters. The first parameter is the RPC endpoint. So I've kind of memorized the RPC endpoint, which is rpc.ankr.com slash bsc. I think so. And then your second parameter is the block number. If you want to look at the block number, let's look back here. This attack happened in this block. So we want to recreate this exploit. It means we want to go back in time. And so we just go back one block like that. Make sure to put a semicolon. Okay, we have set up this function. Next, we want to start with this fapen.unstake. But first, we want to look at how much fapen has. Okay, let's type function test. Test must come first, and then we just type test fapen export. Have a visibility over here, external or public is fine. And then Firstly, we want to find out this. So there's two ways you can either console.log balance of. So console.log has a. You type in your string first and then you have a comma and then you type paper.balance of address paper. Balance of paper in paper contract. Another way to do this, to have a console, is called emit. Um, I kind of forgot what it is. Um, let me think for a bit. I think it's log named. Ah, yes. Is it log name decimal unit? Log name decimal unit takes in three values. The first value is your string, so you just have the same thing. Your value is one and then your decimal is nine because we know that Fabian has nine tokens. Okay, let's try to run this contract and type forge test. Nice. But nothing came out because we didn't type VV. So we want to see the console. 
The first one, console.log, it just shows you a bunch of numbers here. It's pretty hard to read. The second one is hard to write. It's a bit longer, and you need to know log name, decimal, you in. But it gives you the exact amount of decimals, and then if you see here, 9521992, it's actually the same as. Yeah, 952192. 3865106 So cool, we actually duplicated the blockchain when we found out how much Fabian there is in a Fabian contract. Nice. Let's, let's continue with this. So I'm gonna use just one of these. I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna continue. Let's see this Fabian dot unstake amount equals to this. This amount is the same as this amount, so I can do something over here. Firstly, I want to call Fabian dot unstake. Dot unstake. Like that. I need to pass in something. So before that, I type u int amount equals to Fabian dot balance of address Fabian. Because we know that this is the 9.5 million. Now we just pass in this amount over here. Oh, it is. Okay, next, I notice something over here. It says member unstake not found or not visible after argument dependent lookup in contract IRC20. This means that in the interface, we only copied the original interface. We didn't really copy this unstake. All we can do is we can go to this, we copy this function, and we paste it. In here, what is here? I have a semicolon over here, and let's hope it works now. Oh, okay, it's gone. Next, we need Fabian dot approve. So what does this mean? Is it means that you want to let Pancake Router use your Fabian tokens. Okay, so we type Fabian dot approve address router and this long params here is a very long number which actually just you can just type type u int dot max notice the brackets type bracket u int close bracket dot max and close bracket so we have unstake we have approved now it's a pretty tricky part we can check after this Let's check something first. Let's check whether our contract, which is address this, has any Fabian tokens at the start. If we go to this, and we just type forge test, balance of Fabian in our contract, I didn't change this in attack, attack contract, is zero. So that's correct, right? Because at the start, we didn't have any. But after that, when we call unstake and approve. Oops, I click alternate shift F and they auto formatted for me. Looks a bit ugly over here. But anyways, after I call unstake and approve, somehow you realize that originally the Fabian contract has 9.5 and then after unstake and approve it has 0 and for my attack contract it started with 0 and it's 9.5. So we know that the problem is actually in the unstake function. We will see it later. Let's finish the whole exploit first. Okay, so um, let's delete this one. And let's delete all this. So we have proof that the unstake function is the problem. Now, what it wants is it wants to call this swap exact tokens for tokens. For ETH, notice this uh, swap attack, swap exact tokens from ETH for ETH. Let's go back to this and we type router dot this one, and then we have four four values over here. The first is this amount, which we can reuse the variable that we created. The second is zero. The third is a path Fabian WBMB, and the fourth. Is the sender and the fifth is the deadline. Okay. 
So first is amount. Second is zero. Third is the path. Path. Fourth is center. Just this. Fifth is deadline, which is block block time there. And then I like to just plus a thousand here for fun. Now we need to create a path. If you can see here, the path is an undeclared identifier, so we have to create it. So how to create it is with type address, memory, path, equals to um, new address, and two, because we only want two. We want two indexes, paper and WBNB. So in the first index, path zero, we want address, paper. In the second path, we want address um WBNB. Okay. Cool. And let's emit one more thing. Let's emit balance of BNB in attack contract. So WBNB, which has 18 decimals, and balance of adjust this. Actually, not like that. Is um, address, address this dot balance because it's a native token. Then we check it over here. Something failed over here first. Later, I'll just tell you why. But I just want to comment this out and we try again. If you can see the balance of paper in favor contract and then the balance of BNB in the attack contract somehow is a lot because apparently when you start with Foundry, they give you a lot of native tokens to start with. How do we do with that? You type deal, pm dot deal. You type um just this and we type zero later. What this means is I want to start my attack contract with zero dollars. Let's check again. And it starts here. Balance of BNB in attack contract is zero. This function over here swap exact tokens for ETH. It's kind of tricky because it doesn't really swap Fapen to WBNB. It swaps Fapen to BNB and the attacker gets back BNB. You realize it over here. The attacker gets back BNB and not wrapped BNB. So let's fix this. Fix this. I will, I will uncomment this line again and then I will type forge test. Somehow something went wrong here and then it says ETH transfer failed. This is because our contract doesn't actually have receive external table. So our contract actually cannot receive BNB. What this function does is, firstly, it changes, it swaps Fapen to WBNB, then it redraws WBNB to the native BNB. So our attack contract must accept the native token. This is all done with this function. So you don't need to worry about all this. Like that. Let's try again over here. Nice. So how do we know we actually earn money? Well, we have to check the consoles. At the start, our balance of BNB and attack contract is zero. Then if we put it at the end, let's check it again. Nice, we earned 2.04 BNB. So we actually did this whole exploit. And now if you look at what the problem is, the problem was the unstake because the moment unstake was called, the attack contract can actually get money already. Let's, let, let's now look at the unstake. Function unstake external, only value amount. Let's look at what only value amount is. So it's like a modifier, right? And there's a modifier only value amount just means that the amount must be greater than zero. Okay, not that much. Let's go back to function instead. Require balance address this must be more than equals to amount. Not enough stake balance to unstake. 
and then balance message dot sender plus equals to amount and balance uh, just this minus equals to amount. The first thing it asks is that it has to require that this balance, the address this, which means the contract balance must be more than amount. And then somehow my balance increases, which is kind of weird. One more time with another example over here is let's say this contract has 10 million favor tokens and then I call unstake with 1 million. So require balance address this which is 10 million is more than 1 million. So this check passes. Somehow balances message your sender which is me plus equals to 1 million and balance address this minus equals to 1 million. Means I get 1 million dollars. And if you realize this check is actually wrong because it has to require balances message not sender more than it goes to one amount. You want to check that your own balance is more than what you want to take out. If not, you can't take out. This is the issue right here. That's why this token has 9.5 million payment tokens. And the attacker just calls unstake with 9.5 million and then he gets 9.5 million whereas this contract minus 9.5 million okay so we have gone through we've actually read the attack and then we recreated the whole exploit like this firstly we talk about the interfaces and then we talk about the pancake router we created all this and from and we get the values from the Falcon Explorer. Next, we set up this uh, blockchain, this duplicate blockchain, at a block which is before the exploit. And then we tested the exploit. We first make sure that we have zero BNB. Then we call unstake with nine point five million Fapen. We let the router approve, which we let the router use our Fapen tokens, and call this function. So what the router did was, it swaps Fapen, our 9.5 million Fapen, to 2 red BNB, and then it withdraws the red BNB to BNB. So at the start, we had 0 BNB. At the end, we had 2.04 BNB, which means that we actually successfully recreated this exploit. And yeah, this is the end of this video. And... Hopefully you learn something about it. If you want to have more of these kind of videos, just let me know and I will be willing to recreate more exploits. Thank you for watching.